such an exciting time that we are in and if you're a child of god and you are not excited for this season i just pray that god will revive your spirit and that he will give you joy because we have a season at hand where god is doing such amazing things god is aligning god is restoring and i pray in the name of jesus that this season will not pass you by i am pastor connie and today we are going to be talking about god's direction now as we start let us pray father we thank you come holy spirit lead us come and guide us Come and have your way in our lives today. Come and speak to us. Come revive us. Come deliver us, O oh God. Come, mighty Father, through your spirit and bring what I'm going to be speaking today alive in the hearts of men. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Just awesome, greatly awesome to be here today as I talk about God's direction. I just want to start by giving you this short, short story that I had recently. So I am going somewhere, somewhere and I had to be there on time. And I knew that I've got it. I knew that I have the directions to get there. I knew that uh, my my everything is fine. It is going all fine and I put on the GPS as we all know now. What can we do without the GPS? And I start my journey. Now in me, I have faith and I know it is hope. But yes, it is faith. I have faith that uh, my GPS will take me to the right place. And not only will it take me to the right place, but I'll have a smooth, smooth journey to get to this place. Now. Let me say to you, it was the opposite. I was not actually able to get to the place. That's number one. Number two, I had the most disruptions, interruptions, and the difficult ever, one of the most difficult ways or journeys to get to this place. I did not just get lost, but in the way of me getting lost, I also kind of, sort of, got in a in a situation that was not very good and as we know in the world we are in today evil is happening and people can literally attack you on your way so what happens after that i stop and i ask myself did i get the correct directions today as i talk about directions i want to talk about god's directions now if i had prepared and which i did prepare myself i thought i had the correct directions but then after that i realized that i had the wrong directions actually the whole time it is a similar street and i put in the wrong the wrong street took me to the wrong area and yes long story short i was not just lost but i was also very late and I had to apologize. Now, if we are not understanding that we are moving in the direction that God is telling us to move to, I just want to tell you it's going to be worse. We're going to burn out. We're going to get exhausted. We are going to complain. We are going to mama. We are going to find in ourselves under such frustrating conditions. Now, the opposite is what I want to bring to you, God's direction. And today I want to awaken you that God actually wants to direct you. And with God's direction there, I know there might be bumps here and there, but I want to assure you, you will arrive to your destination. Now, I brought a scripture that there's so many examples and scriptures in the word of God that actually talk about God's direction. So many men and women of God in the word of God, including Jesus. Jesus talks about he came at the appointed time. He came and he had a purpose, meaning that he followed the direction that the father had for him. 
everyone so many people you will read in the bible look at abraham and how abraham had to be directed by god to go to a land that he did not know but what he knew is that he is going to be led and directed with god and by god now today i want to bring this very important topic to your attention are you being directed by god do you even ask god for direction have you asked if what you are going through is because you have gone the wrong direction? Because yes, we get to a place where it's frustrating. Is it frustrating because you are on the wrong road or have the wrong directions like I had? And if you are sure you have God's correct directions for this season of your life, then it would make it better when the challenges come because then you can put it all on him and you can look to him. We see this in Abraham, Abraham's journey and he, be, he was Abram before that, before he became Abraham. But Abraham's journey and Abraham's journey, we can see that at every single time he followed the direction of God. Was it easy? No, it was very bumpy. Abraham made so many mistakes, but you know what kept him going and what I admire about our father of faith is that he still kept on going. Even when he made mistakes, he kept on going. Now, I am going to be reading 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse 5. And I'm going to just a little bit with the time we have got. I'm go I can't cover everything about God's direction. But with what I'm going to be talking about, I want to bring a little bit of very important things that I pull out here regarding God's direction. Now, are you believing God for marriage? What are you believing God for? Business, a new job, you know. A, a, a direction into your career are you frustrated where you are right now have you sought god for direction what is god saying because our god speaks so if you are looking at me right now and you're like okay should i just ask him yes he is waiting for you to ask he says ask and you shall receive he's waiting for you to ask him for direction. God desires that we go to him and that we don't choose our own path and our own way and we don't go our own knowledge and thinking and calculation. I am telling you something you will burn. You will burn so bad. I pray that you can consider God's direction in your life. I remember when it was time uh, I asked God and God uh, directed me to go to a country that I did not have anyone, that I knew no one, but God directed me to go to that country. And I came to South Africa without knowing no one. <laughs> and I assure you, I did not know anyone. And I had so many, many things that were against my journey. But all I know, God directed me to, that, to come to South Africa. And God had a plan for my purpose while coming to South Africa. Now I had every reason to bring down the excuses on the table. And it was not easy because at first I kind of delayed and I could call it disobeyed. But I was just checking and making sure. So I waited just to confirm again and again. God confirmed so many times I lost count. Because really God knew my heart. But when God finally confirmed, I said to God, I don't know where I'm going and I don't know what I'm going to find there. But what I know is I'm going to follow your direction because my life is yours. And if it has to be for me to go there and the worst thing is to die, but at least I've died in the will of God. And there were so many scary things. The year I came to South Africa, there had been a hectic xenophobic attack. It was all over the world in my country. It was everywhere on the screens. And it was very scary. And that is the first thing my family was worried about. But I want to say to you, when you follow God's direction, God paves the way and makes the way. And I determined 
that if my family was saying that I might die while in South Africa, rather I die in the will of God. So I started my journey. And it is a journey of faith. I want to tell you this as I'm going to be reading 1 Kings chapter 17. And I am going to be starting from verse 2. And I will go through until verse 23. As we go on, I will just pull out what something about direction. And then we shall read the scripture. But I'm just going to emphasize, if you have time, please read it. I'm going to be reading First Kings chapter 17. Read the whole chapter if you find time. I am not going to read the whole chapter. I am going to pull out a couple of things. Now, for you to follow God's direction, you need faith. It's the first thing that you're going to need. Now, look at this verse 1. Let me start with verse um, 2. And the word of God came unto him, and this is Elijah. Get you from here, turn eastward, and hide yourself by the brook of Charon, that is east of the Jordan. And it's so important that I actually read verse 1 to understand what was happening. And Elijah, who was of the inhabitants of Gilad, said unto Hahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew, nor rain these years, but according to my word. So in this season, if you read the scriptures before, which is chapter 16 and all that, you can see that this was a time of famine. And I just want to relate it to what is happening in the world today. Now, if we are going to look at the standards and the physical situations around us, someone can easily say that we are in a time of drought, drought or a time of, of famine. In this time, there was no rain. And all this is being prophesied and it's all happening. Now, the times that we are in, when we look around, believe me, the economic situations, if you read the news, you don't have to go so far, just look at the news. And I assure you, you will know the physical conditions kind of that we are in and what we see today. Now, let me bring you back to Elijah. So this is a very difficult time according to the physical surroundings of Elijah. But then in verse 2, the word of God came upon him saying, get you from here and turn eastward and hide yourself by the brook, uh, the brook Cherith that is east of the Jordan. So even in the time that is a crisis time in a nation, God has a plan. I want to start by saying to you, child of God, all that God needs from you is obedience and faith, faith. And obedience. I am telling you right now, even in the time of drought or famine, the child of God can thrive and can prosper and can be sustained. So turn your eyes away from everything else. And I know it's difficult. I am not telling you to ignore <laughs> certain things that you have to look at. But what I am telling you is where should you put your trust? Are you going to put your trust in everything else except God? Are you going to put your trust in everything plus God? Or you are going to put your trust in God? In a time like this, a time of crisis which we are in, this is the time for you to lift up your eyes and put your trust to God for direction. God has direction. God has a word of wisdom, of knowledge. God has a word that he wants to direct you. Now that is the first thing that we see regarding God's direction. It is God desires your faith and God desires your obedience. We can see here the obedience of um, Elijah and that we can also see in verse 
three when you go on and read you will see that there was such obedience from elijah and i'm gonna read verse five so elijah went and did according unto the word of the lord for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, and that is the east of jordan if you look at this elijah did not just follow to jordan he went specifically where God had told him to go. He went to the east of Jordan. Remember the verses I read? God was telling Elijah to go to the east of Jordan. And that is very important. You don't just um, run. You obey to the T. You obey God to the T. And I think that is where we do find the challenge. You know, God says, start a business. You start a business. Did you find out which business is God talking about? Did you find out the details of what God is saying? Now, we can see here Elijah was able to not only obey the instruction, but to the instruction, to the whole instruction, to the T. He did not, the Bible doesn't say he went to Jordan. There is a reason why the Bible says he went to the east of the Jordan. And you can check it out in verse 2 again because God is telling him to go to the east of Jordan. Another thing that we have to look out when we talk about God's direction. Sometimes God uses directions to hide you and we can see this in first kings chapter 17 and verse 3 i am still on the same chapter i'm gonna be on the same chapter so if you just hear me say verse 33 it means i'm on first kings chapter 17 and now i'm reading verse 3 get you from here turn eastward you hear that hide yourself by the brook sheriff that is east of the Jordan. God's voice directing you is also hiding you. Is hiding you from things that you might not even understand the enemy has planned against you. Now God needs to, to, to give you directions for a couple of things. But one of them is God also hides you. He hides you from the work of the enemy and from the work of men that are not supposed to be in your life at a time like this. And that we can see in the word of God. So we can see here another point here. God's direction will sustain you. And we can see again chapter 17 and verse 4. When you follow God's direction, you will not run out. You will not Luck. Verse 4 of chapter 17. And it shall be that you shall drink of the brook. And I have commanded that the ravens, I've commanded the ravens to feed you there. And look at this. The ravens, if you don't even know really much about the ravens, ravens, um, they, they are birds that actually eat meat <laughs> if you didn't know i'm just gonna remind you the ravens eat everything they are called uh birds that eat everything they eat everything they eat the meat they eat everything now god is strategically using a bird raven that actually eats meat and god is trying to show something and i believe you can catch the revelation behind this that when God says, follow my direction and leading, and he says he will sustain you, God can even use that same thing that you think God can't use for you to be sustained. And here we can see the supernatural. We can see God using a raven to feed him and what is awesome is that he did not have to he did not have to go to this raven it came to him and the raven knew exactly when to bring food to elijah and that is something that is mind blowing 
If you sit there and you say God is not powerful, I want to invite you to read this and read it properly. God sends a bird, a bird that you look at, you're like, what does it know? It knows the time to bring him what to, the time to bring him food. And this bird was sent by God. And this is something that is mind-blowing revelation. And there's so much revelation there that I will not go into because I need to continue with God's direction. So God also positions you exactly, um, position, sorry, position yourself exactly where God says you should be. And that I have read um, First King verses 5. B, which says, uh, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is east of Jordan. And the reason being that if you don't have, okay, I'm trying to read my notes. <laughs> if you disobey where God has told you to be, I am telling you something, you are out of the will of God. Will you die being out of the will of God? No, you are disobedient. You went, but you did not go exactly. And you did not do exactly that what that which God told you to do. You will not be able to receive the full blessing that you were supposed to receive by obeying. I want to quickly pull out something. And it's not in my notes, but I am so reminded about uh, the father of Abraham, Terah. The father of Abraham, when you read the Bible, he was supposed to go. And you can see that. And let me quickly go there. Genesis chapter 11. Uh, Genesis chapter 11. Let's quickly go there. And let's look at the father of um, Abraham. And it says here. In verse 31. And Terah took Abraham his son and Lot the son of Aaron to his son's son and Sarah his daughter-in-law and his son Abraham's wife. And they went forth with them from Ar of the Chidians to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Now look at verse 31. He was supposed to take Abraham to Canaan, but the Bible says when he got to Haran, Haran he dwelt there. He stopped there. And when you read the next chapter, which is chapter 12, verse 1, the Bible says, Now the Lord had said to Abraham, get you out of the land and I will take you uh, out of your father's house and to a land which I will show you. And where does Abraham end up as the promised land? Canaan. And that is what happens. Terah is only heard about there. But God had directed Terah to take Abraham. So the intention was for them to go to Canaan. So you can say it wasn't disobedience or anything, but the Bible makes it clear. He was intended to go to Canaan. And that is something that I want us to pull out. If we don't obey the full instruction of God and we go halfway, we don't get the full blessing of God. Today, Abraham is the father of our faith because Abraham went and did to the T, the instruction, to the end, the instruction that God gave him God's direction positions you in his will and in his purpose and this we can see in verse 8 to verse 9 of first kings chapter 17 so it says here arise get you to Zareph which belongs to Sidon and dwell there behold I have commanded a widow woman to sustain you and there we can see that if you follow God's direction, God will sustain you. Now, after the brook is dried up, God comes again and instructs Elijah to go. And when Elijah follows, 
He has been sustained by the brook and the brook has dried up and God comes and says to him, now get up, go somewhere else. And the Bible says, and he was sustained. And this is something I want to bring to us today. If God has directed us to be in a certain place, let us not rest completely because sometimes the place where God has told us to be might come to an end and God might require you actually now to get up. So what am I trying to say? Let us make sure we are fully connected to God and we listen to his daily instructions. Maybe God uh, directed you to start that business. But the time has come that is directing you now to something else. Be willing and obedient because now you will start saying, God, why is it that I'm not being sustained? Have you asked God if the season is over? Because we can see Elijah, the brook dried up and Elijah now had to follow and go. Now, if Elijah had said, I'm comfortable here, I'm fine. I am telling you something. Elijah would have died of hunger without food because remember the ravens were sent by God. And if Elijah continues to disobey, the ravens will stop and he can end up dying because of hunger we have to be very attentive to the voice of God and it has to be a daily continuous thing sometimes the brook has dried out and you need to follow another instruction and direction of God your obedience to God's direction will impact others too and we can see this in verses 14 to verses 15. And it says here in verse 14. For that says the Lord God of Israel, the, the harrow of meal that shall not run out, rather shall the, the jar of oil fail until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah and she and he and her house did it many days. Through obedience, the people around us are going to be able to actually benefit from that blessing of obeying the direction of God. When we obey the supernatural manifests, the supernatural shows, when we follow God's direction and that you can read in verse 22. You can see how uh, Elijah was able to, to pray for healing for this son of the widow that she found. Now remember, when we follow God's direction and voice, it does not exempt us from troubles. Troubles will come. Hiccups will come. But the end will be victorious. The end will be victory and there is a reward for you and me when we follow the direction of God and walk in the will and purpose of God. Due to obedience, God's will, due to obedience, we are able to follow God's will and we are able to hear God's voice. When we walk in obedience, I want to say to you, we are going to be able to hear God's voice, verse 22 of chapter 17. So it says here, And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came unto him again, and he was revived. What happens when we are in obedience with God's voice, and we call on him in the time of trouble for help, God will manifest, and God will come. And this is very important. If we follow God's direction and God's guidance for our lives. God will bring a reward unto each and every one. God will also protect us from every attacks of the enemy. We will not labor. We will walk in the true blessings of God. Today, I want to encourage you to just be reminded about following God's direction. Are you following his direction? If you are, then God bless you. Keep in that way. Are you not following God's direction? You are following your direction and going your own way. I want to say to you, you are yet to crash. 
because that is pride. It is called pride. Now I pray, Lord, that you will guide us, you will direct us, you will revive us, you will give us courage to walk in your ways. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.